Good morning. Now, I'm conscious that the last two videos I did uh, were quite a bit longer than what I would normally do. So what I want to do today is bring things back to normal uh, and just choose one topic to talk about uh, and just stick to that today. So uh, what I would like to talk about is um, the national grid again. Now, you may remember uh, a few videos ago, we looked at um, a piece of work that they uh, put out, which showed that all the scaremongering that the uh, press were doing on the back of some of their original research wasn't true. And that when we all drive electric vehicles and we plug them in, uh, the whole world isn't going to end. Uh, actually, it's not going to make that much difference at all. Well, they've done um, a bit more work uh, around electric vehicles and they've uh, looked at what we're going to do when we plug the, our cars in or vehicles in when we're out and about. Uh, and where are we going to go and what's the best infrastructure set up? The National Grid, and in particular, there's a um, person that's employed by the National Grid called Graham Cooper. Now, he uh, is basically looking at the infrastructure. Now, this isn't some chap that's uh, been promoted way beyond his means. This is somebody who's got uh, a background in infrastructure and um, renewable energy, uh, and is basically employed to look at the future of how to um, get us on the roads in EVs using renewable energy uh, with a sensible infrastructure. So um, he's got a bit of an idea about what he's doing, which is great. He's uh, announced that uh, the U I say the UK, England and Wales, Scotland is being done as a separate bit of work, but England and Wales, uh, he can cover using 50 ultra rapid uh, charging stations uh, and that is all that England and Wales require in order for, I think it was 96% of us to be within 50 miles of an ultra rapid charging station. And the vision for that is that that is all we need. We should be able to charge at home and then uh, wherever we drive, whichever direction we go in, we're within 50 miles of an ultra rapid charging station. Now an ultra rapid charging station is uh, a 350 kilowatt charging post. Uh, they're talking about banks of nine, but um, you know, the way I, I think of it is these will be super filling stations. These will be somewhere where there'll be banks and banks of uh, these ultra rapid chargers where you can pull up at any time of the day or night uh, and pretty much guarantee that you can drive straight into a spot, plug your car in uh, within minutes. Uh, I think a 90 kilowatt battery, kilowatt hour battery uh, takes, uh, I, I believe, somewhere in the region of 12 minutes to charge at 350 kilowatts. So you can see how fast that can be uh, and how convenient it can be. Now, there's kind of two ways to look at this. And you know, Graham Cooper himself has said, this is one answer. It's not the answer necessarily. So, you know, it's, it's an option. And that's nice that they're not just saying this is what we're going to do. Um, for me personally, this really appeals to my inner kind of OCD order things, everything sitting nicely in their place. Uh, I love the idea that we could just have 50 of these stations across the country and never have to worry again. Um, it's neat. It's tidy. Uh, potentially it will work charge at home on our journeys we can factor in where we're going to stop the flip side do i really think that will work um, i'm afraid i don't uh, and here's the reasons why first and foremost we're talking about uh, a number of companies who are already in the market trying to put their uh chargers uh, and their um their business towards us uh, are they all going to fall into line and accept that there's just going to be these 50 stations. Um, now, this piece of work has been done uh, in conjunction or in talks with the likes of Tesla, BMW, uh, BP, Shell. So you can already see how they're trying to structure it around the uh, larger uh, manufacturers and uh, using an infrastructure that's already there, i.e. service stations. Uh, but... I know Tesla have said in the past they will welcome anyone to use their chargers. Clearly there's going to be a cost to that. When you look at the likes of uh, Ecotricity, um, Genie Point, um, Chargemaster, Polar, 
just to name a few of the ones that we've got here in the UK, how are they going to all come together <clears throat> and uh, devise a mega charging station where they're all involved? Uh, I don't see how that works. Do we have Tesla emblazoned on five pumps, Polar on some others, charge your car on some other? You know, it, the different prices that they all cost, are they going to standardise it? Um, who gets priority? What charging cables do we get? Ionity uh, aren't going to have Chadamo. So do Ionity go in there or do they get excluded because they don't have uh, all the charging options? There's too many companies and too many questions to be able to make this work, in my, my own opinion. Uh, I love the idea of it, but I think it's a step too far. Um, the only way I could see this working is if the government step in and say, we are going to implement it hook, line and sinker. So we're going to go in, we're going to pay for the, the stations, we're going to pay for the chargers, and we're going to pay for the infrastructure that supports it and there will be a set pricing structure at all 50 of these charging stations. That for me is the only way it will work. Um, will the government do that? I very much doubt it. Uh, already we've seen how uh, central government have decentralised the grants for councils to install chargers. Uh, there's a 75% grant towards every um, charger. That's not getting used as it is because you know, certainly here in my local council, we will just have to pay another pound a month towards policing. If there isn't funding enough from central government to cover the what I consider the necessities, uh, such as policing, then how are they going to fund or how can they justify funding uh, these mega charging stations? Um, and certainly at the moment when the EVs aren't the norm. Um, the only way that they could fund it is by increasing road tax and um, putting more cost on everyone. Uh, yes, it's coming. We know that. But um, that may be way off in the future. Uh, as I say, I would love to see it. I think it's a great idea, but I don't think uh, we can get all the, the companies together. And I don't think we can get that structure in place um, to be as neat and tidy as it appears to be packaged at the moment. So um, so a lovely, lovely bit of work. and. Um, perhaps something for the future uh, and some real food for thought that actually with a bit of foresight and one individual or one group of people coming together, look what we can achieve. We can get away from all these random little charge points here, there and everywhere and we can actually have uh, a structure in place that makes sense for a whole country, um, which I, as I say, I really want to see, but um, I don't think it's going to happen. So that's where we are with that. Some really interesting news, I thought. And isn't it great that uh, the National Grid, once again, uh, are showing such an interest in EVs and renewable energy uh, that possibly they will be the people that do galvanise all these other companies that are all off doing their own little things in their own little way uh, and actually get us uh, maybe a common charging standard, a common pricing structure, uh, a common infrastructure they possibly are the people to do it. So um, uh, let's hope that more comes from them soon. Uh, now, before I go, I want to say a final, um, a, a really big thank you to all you guys that watch my channel. Um, the reason I want to say thank you is because as a result of you watching the channel uh, and uh, some of you have subscribed to me on uh, Patreon, uh, which has allowed me to have the funds to buy some new equipment. Um, and in fact, I'm using it now, uh, this little voice recorder. Uh, it's a Tascam DR05. I'm hoping you can hear a real difference in the audio. Uh, normally when I'm in here, it's not great and I get a lot of comments about um, how poor the audio is, but it's such a good room because of the light and I don't have any other lights at the moment um, that I like to come in here. So I'm hoping that that improves things. Uh, next for it is a lapel mic. Hopefully that'll improve things again. But um, without you guys watching and the, um, the money that I get from the adverts that come on at the start, it's not a lot. Hence, it's taken me so long to be able to buy it. But um, uh, between that and the support on Patreon, uh, it has funded that for it. So I'm hoping you hear an improvement and I'm hoping we, I can, over the coming months, buy some more bits and pieces to make the videos even better. So um, thank you ever so much. And um, that's it for today. If you've enjoyed today's video, remember to like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again soon. Take care.